Welcome back. Today is processing day where we're going to process our meat birds and God has blessed us with a beautiful day to do so. Let me show you around what our setup for this year and then our setup for our processing and then we'll go ahead and get started. So in this run is where we keep our meat birds this year. Um, I built this tractor and this is how we've done it previously and we drag them around the, the yard uh, starting off once a day and when they get bigger you're up to three maybe four times a day just to give them fresh grass and that but this year we decided to do something different so I just moved our hoop coop over here and I'm kind of using it just as a place for them to stay throughout the night and then I open this up and we let them go around through this section I'm not sure how well it shows up, but we have it all fenced in. We had two canopies up to get them under shade throughout the day, um, and then their food and their water. So all this hoop coop is, I ran treated two by fours around the bottom, squared them up, put some corners in. I can use this for other reasons. That's why I have a roost in there for if we want to use it for other chickens. Um, and then I have chains hanging where I can hang their feed and waters and stuff throughout there. But this year I didn't need that because like I said, I have them in the run. And then I took cattle panel and I just put them up and over. And then I ran chicken wire through or above the cattle panels. And then I put a tarp over it. So keeps them out of the sunlight and out of the weather. Then I just ran these bungee cords in the front to hold that shut. And then I tied a rope to the sides, each side. And then this rope I can just pull around this door here. And this is what I use to pull the chicken tractor around the yard. Sorry about this camera work, making you dizzy or sick. So then all this door is, is a section of cattle panel, again, that I put chicken wire on the outside, zip tied them together, and then I ran wire around just for a hinge. And this will actually hinge all the way up and lay down on the top of the chicken tractor. So that way we can get in and out of it. So I'm gonna get them moved over to the cages, get them transferred into the cages, and then we'll get started with the processing. So now that we have the chickens in the cage, I'm going to show you the setup of how we do things or why we do things. So we start off, we'll grab a chicken from the cage and we'll just walk over here to this hugging cone. And this is what we use to dispatch the chicken. So what you do is you hold it by the feet and you lower it down in here and its head will come out the bottom. Um, and that actually does relax the chicken. It makes the head or the blood rush to its head. And then while we have its head down here, we will slit its, slit its throat and it'll bleed out and it'll be calm throughout the process. Once it dies or once it passes on, it will kick a little bit, but this hugging cone will keep it um, contained and keep it from hurting itself or bruising any of the meat. Um, so it's a very humane way of doing it. There's many different ways that you can do it. This is just how I choose to do it. I made this by just rolling up a couple or a piece of rubber. I drilled some holes down through it and just wired some wire, just kind of sewed it together so it stays together and then I screwed it to this four by four post. And so the blood will drain out into that bucket down below 
I'm gonna have a little bit of water into that just to keep it from coagulating and getting stuck to the bucket. So from here, once the chicken passes on, we'll go over, we'll take it out of the cone and we'll uh, stick it into some soapy water. Um, all that's doing is kind of cleaning it up a little bit before I take it to the scalder, getting any kind of feces or uh, try to get some blood off of the chicken before we take it over to the scalder. So then from the soapy water, we take it over here to a turkey fryer that I have. And we want to keep this water at about 140 to 160 degrees. You don't want it much hotter than that. Um, you can go up to 170, but you don't want to go much higher than that than 160. Um, the idea is not to cook the chicken, um, whether, rather to just scald it so the feathers come off easier. Um, and I will show you what to look for when you're scalding the chicken to know when it's done. So once we get it prepped for defeathering, we come over to this station, the chicken plucker. Um, and this is the first year that we're using this, so we're gonna give it a shot. But the idea of this is you put it in here, you turn it on, you add water to keep it going. This bottom plate actually spins it around and throws it against these other rubber fingers and it plucks the feathers out for you. So instead of taking 15 minutes to pluck a chicken, it takes about anywhere from 15, 30 seconds um, to pluck a chicken. Um, so I'm excited to see how this works. Um, and then there's three fingers right here that point downward and that continues to spin with it and it cleans out the plate below, sends the feathers into this bucket here through a chute at the bottom. So all your feathers and that will collect in that bucket. So then I'll just need to keep emptying that bucket and dumping the feathers. From there, we'll come over to our processing table. This is where we will take the guts out and clean the chicken, make sure that we get all the feathers out of it. Um, just one last chance, you know, we'll put the guts and stuff into the bucket. And then from the table, we will stick it in this bucket or this cooler of ice water. Um, I do have a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there too. That's what the yellowish tint is. Um, and then that's where we'll keep them and let them rest to get through the rigor mortis um, until we're ready to package them up. Um, once we're ready to package them up, I'll run you through that and how we do it at that time. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I forgot to show you this one here. I didn't have it hanging there because I didn't want it in the way, but here we have just a cheap fishing scale in a five gallon bucket. We have it zeroed out. Um, what we're gonna do with that is just kind of weigh the birds as we do them doing live weight and then we'll do it again once we get it finished just to kind of see what we've got. Okay. So now we have it in, it's hanging upside down. I brought his head down here and you feel for the cheekbones, which is right there. And then you're gonna wanna slice just to the side of it. You don't wanna get the jugular or it'll tense up and make the meat tough. So right now the chicken's relaxing, it's calm. It's good to go, it's kind of in a zen. I'm not gonna show this on camera, but again, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I felt the cheekbone. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right alongside the cheekbone here and then it'll bleed out into this bucket. For this, you wanna grab the two feet and its head. That way it doesn't struggle. Yeah, we're gonna put it down into the hugging cone. And then you hold on to its head and make sure you have a hold of its head. All right. Now another thing to mention is once you slice the jugular, you wanna continue to hold on to the head you don't want it to get back up in there. Again, it can thrash around a little bit easier uh, if you don't. And you also wanna keep the head tilted so it allows the blood to flow. If you cut just the, the arteries, um, it'll continue to allow the heart to pump and blood or bleed it out faster and you get more blood out of the chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and then we'll move on to weighing it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and weigh this one. Oh, we forgot to zero this out. 
All right, that's zeroed out. Seven point two four pounds. All right. And then from here, put it in some soapy water. And clean it up a little bit. Just dunk it. All right. Now I'm gonna. a glove on for this next step all right and then you just take it over to the scalder here you're gonna have it in there for probably right around 30 seconds or so What you're checking for is to see when the feathers start coming out easily or if the skin starts peeling on the legs. Those are two signs that it's good. I'm getting a little easier. Once you got that, bring it over here and turn the water on in here. Flip it on and throw the chicken in. We still have some feathers in there, but got a pretty much naked chicken. So then from there, I'm get my glove off, set it down. And there we take it over to the table here for processing. First thing that we're gonna do is try to get some of these feathers off that we couldn't get, clean it up a little bit. As you can see too, the skin is peeling off. This is what I was talking about. Watch for the skin peeling off in the legs. That tells you when it's done as well. So it leaves the, the legs cleaner. All right. And this I'm not gonna really worry about too much. Right here, there's an oil sack or an oil gland. So we're just gonna cut that off anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start, we'll cut off the legs. What you want to do is just fold it forward and you can see the knuckle in there when you're folding it. So when you fold it and just go ahead and cut at that knuckle and it'll come off. And cut right through that knuckle, see how it will. And then there's a the tendon and then just the skin. So it's just real easy, you're not cutting through any bone. You can use your knife for that. Or I have I have some chicken shears here too that you could also use for cutting through. But again, find that knuckle. Just fold it over. You can feel the knuckle. Cut through. Watch your fingers. The knife I'm using for this is a Gerber. It's got replaceable blades. It's very, very sharp. Get through that tendon. And comes right off. And like I said, I'm just going to cut this tail off. You don't want that oil gland on there. So you just kind of cut them both ends. Goes right through the bone and you're, you're through. Alright, then for now, I'm going to come to the front. 
grab the hot or the the hide sorry grab the flesh the skin and just cut a small hole in that skin there and what you're looking for in here is the trach and the esophagus so once you get those go ahead and cut them cut around them just free them up for when you're pulling them through so i just separate Separate the skin around and make sure you get both of them. And you want to watch out for the crawl here, which is a sack where they hold the food until it gets down into the the uh, yeah, having a brain fart. I got both of these. I, I just kind of ripped the skin and stuff until I got around them. Here's the crawl that I was talking about. That's the sack that holds the food until it gets down into the gizzard. So once you get that, you just want to cut it off. All right, now we're done with the head part for now. I'm turn it back around. And I've already cut the oil gland off. So now here's the vent. So now I'm just going to cut around and you're going to want to hold up on the skin as you're pulling or cutting so you don't get any of the intestines I'm not sure how much of it you can see, but again, I'm just cutting around the vent. Being careful not to stab my knife too deep in. You don't want to get the intestines or the colon. So I just cut around. Until that's all loose. All right, and now all I need to do is I put my fingers up underneath. This is just some loose skin here. And I'm just gonna cut a slit so I can get my hand in there. And then at this point, you're just gonna reach in and grab and pull everything back towards you. So kind of rip them off there. Don't be afraid to pull on it. You'll be fine. There's the heart. And then the last thing that you'll be pulling out is that there's that crawl and then the soft, I guess, and stuff, the trait. Those are the last things that you should be able to pull out. All right, so then the only thing left in there that's going to be hard that you can't just pull out when you're yanking are the lungs. They're stuck onto the rib cage. Make it hard to get them out, but you just got to kind of have to scrape your fingers to get out the lungs. So they are hard to get out, but there's one. And there's the other one. All right, so now you have a cleaned out bird. This here I just throw into a gut pot bucket over here. I'm not going to show you that, but throw it into a gut bucket. And then the last thing I do is I'm just going to remove the head and the neck. Right now I'll just remove the head and we'll do the neck later. Yep, there we go. All 
All right, and that's done. Now we're gonna take it over to the scale again. We're gonna weigh it and see what we have. I guess it helps if I zero out the scale first. All right. So we end up with a weight of 5.61 pounds. Total weight. So for us, that's a good sized bird. Now we raised these to eight weeks of age. Um, Again, I did something different this year. I usually keep them in the tractor and haul them around the yard a couple times a day. Um, they don't get a lot of exercise that way. Uh, and they fatten up faster. I didn't think that was much like too normal for chickens. It didn't feel normal. So that's why I set them up with the run. So I'm gonna try it out this year, see how tough the meat got because of that, getting them more exercise throughout the eight weeks. Uh, see if that mattered. If it did, I probably won't do it again next year. Um, if it didn't, that's probably how I'm going to continue to do it. So right, let's go ahead and get this into the ice water. We're going to move ahead and we're going to do the rest of these birds so you don't have to watch that whole process. And then the next time you'll see it is when we're packaging it. Now just soak it in the ice water, make sure it's covered. And we'll just fill up the cooler. I'm just gonna go through this, the internal organs here real quick and some of the stuff that you wanna save. So here's that oil gland, the vent, the intestines, and you get up to the liver. A lot of people like to save the liver to eat, but when you're doing it, there's the gallbladder right there, and you don't wanna break that open. So make sure you cut around it if you're gonna save it, save the liver. So that way you don't get the gallbladder. So there's one liver and the other one. So there's some livers. Then this is the this is the gizzard. I don't know how much you can see. A lot of people like to save this. Um, this is basically the chicken's teeth. They swallow rocks and sand and other things and then it gets into the gizzard this is going to be kind of gross and i apologize for it but and then the muscle of the gizzard will grind all that with the stones and that's how it digests its food so we're going to dump this off all right now when you're cleaning these up it just has this membrane in the skin and you can just pull that right out and you can have a gizzard fry it up for your dog or whatever you want a lot of people like to save those and then the last thing that people like to save is the heart so this is the heart of the chicken when you want to clean it up you just take all these valves off the top of the heart so you just want to Cut the top of it off. And there you have a nice little heart to go with it. So those are the, the things that people would like to save. The other thing you have here is the lungs. So I don't save any of these. Um, we used to fry them up for the dog and stuff, but we don't save them anymore. I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of grief for that, but that's our choice. That's what we're gonna do. We just get rid of all of it. So now we're just left with the chicken here. Take its neck off and then we'll go weigh her.